Hey guys, welcome back to Legit Streetcars. Today I'm in Jamestown, North Dakota, 800 miles away from where I live to pick up my new tow rig, a 2012 Chevy Express van that I'm going to build and boost to the tune of 1,000 horsepower. So Peter and I just flew in. And I actually bought this van a couple of months ago, but I wasn't able to make it out until now. So the guy just mailed me a key fob and the title, and he said it would be here at this place of business, which I'm not 100% sure if it's even open. Um, but anyway, he said the key fob works, but it's been two months. It works. It's good. It's good. Okay, so maybe we have good batteries here. Um, so this thing was only, okay, hang, hang on, Peter, hang on. That works too. <laughs> so this van was only $4,000. And if you look up the book value of a 2012 Express 3500, and this is the higher trim level uh, with the chrome bumpers and everything, it books out for like $17,000 in good condition. So I thought this was too good to be true, but it didn't look like it had any rust, which was my main prerequisite for buying one of these. But he did list it as having a bad transmission. And uh, we're gonna try and drive it 800 miles all the way back to Chicago, so. Uh, let's see. He said that it shifts sometimes and makes a horrendous noise. Let's go ahead and start her up. First step to driving 800 miles home is an engine that fires. There we go. No way. He said he hasn't started it or anything. And these people are so nice out here in North Dakota. Look at this. This thing has a full tank of gas. He stored it for me for free. Just, just very nice. We're not used to this, Peter. No, this is this is that like Midwest hospitality. Yeah, we don't we don't get that in Chicago, even <laughs> though it's the Midwest. Okay, so it runs, 13.2 miles per gallon. Look at that. They just changed the oil, or they reset the cluster. Who knows? Wow, look at the tires. 71 psi in the back. Oh my gosh, 4,400 engine hours. That's not bad at all. 201,000 miles. Let's hear this engine. Engine sounds great. And it's got ice cold AC. $4,000 people. It's a 15 passenger van, just like just like a church van. <laughs> this thing runs so good. It's not misfiring, no smoke whatsoever. This is the six liter engine uh, with the six speed transmission. So I believe that's the 6L90E, uh, which I'm going to add a trans brake to. It's gonna have launch control. We're gonna boost it. This is gonna be the tow rig and I'm gonna use this all the time, but it's gonna have a ton of power. And I think we're gonna do like a, just a kind of a patina build. Like it's gonna look just like a normal van, just like you see it now. But we're gonna take these factory wheels, widen them, put drag radials on them. Uh, and then we might even do like a church van logo or something. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure, we'll see. But uh, anyway, so $4,000 for this van. It's got a little bit of paint failure, like all of these do, and a little bit more here on the hood. But other than that, the main reason I bought this is I saw pictures of the bottom of the doors here. And more importantly, these rockers, they always rust out. And what's weird is on the Carfax, this is clean title and everything, no accidents. Um, but this was used in Illinois, Wisconsin, Minnesota. So it's not like a California or Arizona van. So it's very rare to see this. It's all muddy under here, but nothing is rusted. Nothing at all. I mean, look at these floors. They're perfect. There's a tree here, but they're perfect. This is just amazing. You should see the stuff we get in Chicago. All of this is just rotted away to nothing. This van, outside of being really dirty right now, is in excellent, excellent condition. I'm so excited. It's weird when the only holes that are in the, the frame are the ones that came from the factory. Yeah, <laughs> this van is straight as an arrow. Oh my gosh, the tires. Look at the tires, they're even good too. Unbelievable. What do we got going on under, under the hood here? Some hay on this side. Some hay, okay. But a very, very smooth and quiet six liter LS engine. Oh man. Got a lot of hay going on here. Oh, okay. We have bird eggs. A bird lived here or still lives here right by the engine computer. All right, makes sense. A little bit of leak from the brake master cylinder. This is a hydro boost car, um, but clean coolant and this was fleet maintained. So the story was that for the vast majority of this van's life, 
It was owned by a construction company and it was just driving people, I guess mostly out in North Dakota for the last few years uh, to different construction jobs. So it's a little bit dirty inside but it's had all of its maintenance done at the dealership and they diagnosed the van as having a bad transmission. This is the only damage I could find on the body, these little dents here on the door. Um, but this was sold to me because it was traded in as having a bad transmission, 4,000 bucks. And here's the interior, it's a little dirty. Um, nothing we can't handle, but it has working AC all the way in the back. And you can see this is the upgraded van model that has the actual carpet which is kind of destroyed. We'll have to clean all of this. Um, but this is so cool, guys. As far as a tow rig goes, to have this kind of space, it's just missing this row here. Um, but to have this kind of space for very little cost and the amazing towing capacity of one of these, which I think is around 10,000 pounds, it's basically a 3,500 truck. You just, you can't beat the price. Try buying a Chevy pickup truck, a 3,500, for this cheap, in this good of condition. You can't do it. That's the door damage right there. This thing doesn't stop. <laughs> okay, it would have been perfect without that. All right, Peter, we're uh, we're ready. You Let's ready? Do it. Let's burn some you, gas. You ready to hear this uh, this transmission? Yeah, what is it? We're we're 800 miles from Chicago. We got a full tank of gas. We're gonna get some sunglasses. We'll get some sunglasses. We'll, we don't. We'll be driving at night. We don't smoke, so we won't get you know the cigarettes like the we'll Blues brother. Meats. Yeah, we'll get some smoked meats. Yeah, um, all right. So last time with the E30, you gave us a 45 percent chance yeah. of making it to Dayton, Ohio. We have double more than double the mileage now yes. with a car that was sold at a hefty discount because of a bad transmission what are you giving us chances percentage i haven't even heard the transmission yet yeah i know but that's the point yeah right you got to give us your I'm guess gonna say 70 i'm gonna do 70 70 yeah i'm optimistic on this one all right let us know guys in the comments section what are the chances we make it back to chicago with no major breakdowns i mean something's gonna happen i'm sure but Bingo cards? Bingo cards. Yeah. So technically you can fly with tools under seven inches, but I really didn't want to risk my tools. So this is all we brought for this 800 mile trip. We have a portable tire inflator, a jumper, an OBD2 scanner, some gloves, and then I think we're just gonna stop off at an auto parts store and buy like a box of cheap tools. accelerating or are you pulling off the I was just getting on the pedal a little bit it makes this horrible noise but then it, it tries to stop you as well that's scary so I can deal with noises I just can't deal with uh, the lurching lurching and like it's like it tries to it's like braking essentially it's, a, it's already got a trans brake it's got a trans brake yeah <laughs> I think it was right when it shifted into one of the gears I don't know which ones but we're only at we're only at 45 miles an hour now we're about to get on the highway there it is. It's like booing? It's mooing. Peter, you still give it 70%? Uh, it, it went down a little bit. Well, guys, I'm not sure a van in this condition could make it all the way back to Chicago. So there is a chance that Peter and I have to sleep in it after it breaks down. So luckily, it is America's largest passenger van. So before this all goes south, let me tell you guys about America's largest injury law firm, Morgan & Morgan. With over 100 offices and 800 lawyers, Morgan & Morgan has the resources to fight for you and their services are always free unless you win your case. No upfront costs, no sign-up fees. If they don't win, you don't pay. Morgan & Morgan is also not a one lawyer fits every case type of firm. They have lawyers who specialize in every area of personal law and with over 4,000 support staff working 24 seven, they are prepared to answer your call to make your experience as painless as possible. Morgan & Morgan is gonna fight to get their clients the best possible results and their fee is free unless they win and it's super easy to get started just click on my link down below or go to forthepeople.com slash legit or dial pound law or pound 529 from your cell phone so a big thanks to morgan and morgan for sponsoring this video now let's get back to some van adventure this is a very bouncy ride this is the 3500. This thing can handle some weight and it's totally unloaded right now. All right, we're at 50. Oh, there it is. Okay. It literally moves like a cow. <laughs> it's 
It's like a cow in pain, but it's a van. Oh, this does not handle. There it is. Okay, so it's pretty much every anytime I go lightly into the throttle. I don't know if it necessarily. Ooh. Ooh, that was. A, I was gonna say I don't think it correlates with the shift, but that was a little bang right there. That was something. Here we go. We're getting on the highway. We're at 60. Oh, oh, go, baby. Did it shift past it? It shifted past it. It blew. It, it, it did it. We're at 70. So that one was definitely on a shift, unless it's a torque converter issue, and it and it locks up. No, there it is again. It's so random. Like I really can't figure out if it's definitely when it shifts. It's just random. It might have more to do with RPM. Like at a certain RPM, it makes this booing sound. Is there a check engine light? There's no check engine lights. So it's not like a, ooh. There it is again. So yeah, it's like halfway between a moo and a whale, like moo. Yeah, it's a moo whale. So like if I went into a dealership right now to complain about this and they asked me to describe the, the issue, I would say my, my van is moo whaling at me. Uh, wow, 75 miles an hour speed limit here, that's great. These tire pressures are insane. Oh, there it is. And we're just, we're on cruise control right now. It's just moving away. Fuel range, 331 miles of free fuel. Thank you, fine people of North Dakota. Here we go, tech. So we're at 1900 RPM at 75 miles an hour. I don't know what that means as far as the issue we're having, but I, it's kind of nice to know the RPM, I guess. They were moving at each other. <laughs> well, if it was slipping, then it would, it would, it would, that would throw a code, right? Like the ratio, the incorrect ratio. Error. Yeah, if the trans was slipping, it would probably throw a code. Let's find a parts store. Yeah. Get some tools, and we'll check like the diff fluid. Oh yeah, okay. And, okay, and then like the U joint. Maybe oh it's yeah. Weird U joint thing. That sounds further back it than does. I. Like, well, well, yeah. Oh yeah, because it's not like the tra It's not like there's a torque tube. The trans is right there. Trans here. is right there. Yeah. It's not. I don't think it's the trans. I don't think it is. You can feel it, and it definitely. The, the only thing that makes me think trans is that it kicks me out of power, but it don't, But it's more like a binding. Yeah, you know what, and if it chatters, that would be a binding. It could be a U-joint. It could be just something like stupid like that. Because like a $28 U-joint. All right, guys, we're on our way to a parts store right now. We want to get some parts and check over some more things on the van here. We weren't really able to do much there in the gravel with no tools. Um, but check this out. I've noticed every time it makes this noise, we're on cruise control right now, that the tack jumps up to like 2,500 RPM which could mean a couple things. Either the torque converter, oh, there we go. You see that? It makes the noise and it jumps up. We don't lose speed and the cruise control doesn't kick out or anything. That could mean it's the transmission literally slipping or possibly the torque converter clutch slipping as well. So, something like that. So it does seem like something is slipping right now. All right, we just went up like a slight little incline and I felt a little one of these. Now it's okay, but yeah, just every roughly one minute the tack jumps up to like 2,500 RPM and it makes the noise. But it was doing it in basically all of the gears. So, I don't know. But it hasn't it hasn't even kicked us out of cruise control yet. So typically, if your engine's misfiring or if there's a serious like power issue, it'll kick you out of cruise control. It hasn't done that. So, that's cool. This is, there it is again. This being like the higher up trim level, it has like a CD player and like good speakers, like not good speakers, but you know, speakers in the back. It's like the nice version and it drives straight as an arrow. This thing is just a dream. Like it's, I know it's a little rough obviously, but this was a phenomenal value. Phenomenal value. <laughs> Trying to say that through the movie. <laughs> Does this have an aux? This has an aux. Oh. No, this is the best van ever. You're living in the lap of luxury. This is a luxurious express van. I, I, dude, I would daily this thing. I love vans, by the way, people. I love vans. My friend Arnie, he loves vans as well, and he just got a Duramax conversion van, like a Chevy Express conversion van, so I gotta go meet up with him. But I'm all about the van life, so phase one of this build is gonna be like a 15-passenger church van with a thousand horsepower and a trans brake and a drag radial. But phase two is I'm gonna remove all of the seats except for seating for five. And then we're gonna do like a mobile man cave. So like a 1000 horsepower mobile man cave. So I'll have like a couch back there, a big screen TV, some good speakers, maybe a little card table, uh, you know, a battery pack with some AC outlets, you know, or maybe we'll wire that in with an inverter. So it'll be kind of like a little camper build, but like the ultimate race car trailing 
family vacationing, just just the best, the best of every world can be in this $4,000 super dirty and muddy former construction van. This is, this is a dream van. All right, so we got some warped rotors in the front. Not too bad, but we're getting off here to go to a parts store. Um, we just had a brutal slip of the transmission and I just want to look over some stuff. We haven't done anything yet, so we got to buy some tools while we can still get to a tool store to buy them. There we go. Okay, that's that's the biggest slip right there. We got to figure out what gear it is. That's where it just straight up drops power and it won't shift into the next gear unless I let off the throttle all the way and then I can get it to go. Uh, maybe. Yeah, it's definitely a trans. All right, well, you know, I thought there was a tiny percentage chance I'd get away with it not being a transmission, but that has gone away, but that's okay, 4,000 bucks. I was literally gonna build the trans anyway, because we're putting a transmission brake in it. So whatever, we're gonna build this thing up like crazy and it'll definitely hold this 6,500 pound van. Does it smell a little, it smells a little coolanty. Just a little. It smells like ramen to me. Oh yeah, you don't smell anything, that's right. We just drove it a few miles, so now that everything's warmed up, we're gonna check the transmission fluid. This is the longest transmission dipstick I've ever seen. This will not stop. Okay. So let's just check condition first. Yeah. I mean, it's not the best. It's not It's not really pink and red and all that kind of good stuff. A little bit. Yeah. It's got a little bit of a burn smell to it. She needs a trance. I'm going to use the bird's nest here to wipe this off and my fingers. Okay, there we go. That's the factory recommended procedure, right? Yeah, just wipe it on your fingers. You're, you're fine. It's a good moisturizer. Yeah, it's, it's definitely got good fluid level. It's right here in the hot area. I really the, the the fluid doesn't look too bad. It smells kind of bad. Hey, you know what? We're at a parts store. We should get one of those fix a trans things. Oh, oh yeah. Experiment. Why not? It's already bad. It's so. already bad. <laughs> All right. We just got to Napa here in North Dakota, and this is the best Napa store I've ever been to. They have straight up drive shafts and yokes just on the shelf. I mean, this is this is serious. So obviously, we're out in a farm town, so they have hydraulic fittings, gigantic rope. I mean, this is this is legit. Guys, you got to see the bathroom in this Napa. You would never see this in a major city. They just trust that no one is going to steal any of this stuff in here. This is crazy. In Chicago, this would all be gone, like, in a few hours. All right, so here's the fix-a-trans section. And I want something that straight up promises it's going to fix my transmission. This one does. Stops, slips. Okay. That's 10 bucks. Here we go. Fixes, shifting problems, reduces slippage. This has two promises, and it's the most expensive. Uh, not sponsored at all. I don't even know what brand this is. Lube Guard? Never heard of it. Um, okay, let's see if this works. Uh, no, no, we're good. <laughs> we're just checking stuff. The guy's just asking if we're having problems. Like, people out here are so nice. This is ridiculous. Shout out to North Dakota. Seriously. North Dakotans? North is Dakotans. That... A in a boot? Do they kind of speak kind of Minnesota-y? Yeah, uh, it's up north. It's up north, yeah. I mean, right? Oh yeah, probably should have checked this before we left, but it's all good. And it was, the oil was just changed according to the uh, oil life and the sticker. There's a sticker from the dealership that the oil was just changed. I think that's probably when they diagnosed the uh, transmission issue. Is that your liquid hammer? Liquid hammer, yeah. that's right. All right, here we go. Lube guard. I, I've never heard of this. Have you ever heard of lube guard, Peter? Nope. Yeah. It's the most expensive stuff and it promises to fix my transmission. Look, they give you paper filters at this Napa. This paper funnel is, might actually work. Here we go. So all we gotta do is pour it in. Uh, you don't even have to drain any. Kinda looks just like trans, ooh, look at that stuff. I was gonna say it looks like, it looks like transmission fluid, but it's got some weird stuff in there. You might have had to shake it first. Oh yeah. Add one ounce per quart. Or the this whole is, thing. This is 10 ounces. Oh yeah, that's about right. I don't know what in the world I'm putting in this transmission right now. Is it a little, dabs of oil or i have no clue is that the friction modifier is it sawdust is that modern day sawdust it's like black sand yeah it would modify the friction for sure <laughs> are these uh bird eggs they're, they're, they're done they're, they're, they're empty yeah well this one already hatched right is that what that means i'm not a bird guy but yeah be bigger oh you think so yeah so this one was it eaten 
by something. There's another one. Let's see. Oh, oh, that one cracked right open. Darn. They had a nice, a really nice home going on here. I'll just put it back. I don't want to get this guy's parking lot all dirty. Home wrecker. I don't want to be a home wrecker. Legit street. Street egg. There's nothing to bury this time, so yeah, no, no, no funerals today. No funeral. <laughs> Alright, so this is the box of tools that we bought. That's everything that's in there. So uh, I'm not going to open this unless we need it, just so I can return it, maybe. I know what some of you guys are thinking. This thing is like a little rough, but it truly is not. The bones of this vehicle are absolutely amazing. I mean, we have a lot of cleaning to do, and yes, this carpet is probably stained a little bit, um, but it doesn't really smell in here. The seats aren't ripped up. We have these vents. We'll clean up the headliner. Um, and yeah, this is gonna be a fine 15 passenger van. It's totally complete. Drive straight as an arrow. I'm, I'm loving it, I'm loving it. I just got underneath here to show you guys how nice it is and there's something in the ground there. It's probably just from the AC though. Cause yeah, it's bone dry. Everything, look at this gearbox. Look at how clean. No rust whatsoever. The sway bar end links aren't broken. Shocks aren't leaking. Our slipping transmission doesn't leak at all. No engine oil leaks. It's got an AC Delco oil filter because it was maintained at the dealer. Look at the back of that LS motor. It's just begging for boost. 4,000 bucks and it has these gigantic catalytic converters that are probably worth like $1,000. Any play in the drive shaft, Peter? No, just the, the center bearing support has a normal yeah. like, little cushion, but you know, nothing in the U-joints or anything. Okay, ABS pump is down here. It just has a lot of mud. Yeah. They were just driving this out into fields and doing whatever they were doing. We just stopped and topped up the tank while we're here and had to pick up some essentials at the gas station, including some of this because I have a pounding headache from getting up at like three o'clock in the morning and getting no sleep. But if you guys are trying to cut down on your carbs, don't get this, Peter. <laughs> Beef jerky and pork rinds. Delicious. Uh, we got Peter taking over for a little bit here on the drive. 690 miles left. Uh, I think we're, our range is 430 miles right now, so we got one stop and then Chicago. All right. Yeah, that was a little one. Picked up, picked up a little. Oh. Yeah, there it is. That's the worst one. So what was that? Was that third? That was at, yeah, coming out of third. Into fourth. Okay. At 60, 55, 60 miles an hour. So far, that's the only one that actually drops off power. Yeah. Well, we'll see if this uh, whatever brand transmission fix in a bottle does anything. This is definitely the test. It'll have plenty of mileage to work. Oh, there it goes. See, we went up to 2,300. Yeah, no noise no though. No noise. Pumping up to 75 miles an hour. That's where I was before. Oh, oh okay, yeah. there yeah. it is. There it is. Immediately. Man, I thought that fix a trans did something. <laughs> I gotta say, it is beautiful out here. This is so nice. Coming from the big city, we don't see a lot of this. Well, I guess I could just travel like an hour away in Illinois and see a lot of this, but it's just a nice day. How about that? It's a nice day. Open road, cracked windshield, slipping transmission, Peter driving a, a General Motors product, which is weird. It's mostly <laughs> Japanese for him, but what's your dream daily driver right now, Peter? Dream daily driver? Oh, that's tough. I think, no, I think it'd be a woody wagon. I want to, like, one of those big B body woody wagons. Oh, yeah. I would rock one of those. That'd be cool. Or the completely opposite spectrum, like a little K van, like one of those tiny little pickup trucks. Like three cylinder, right? Yeah, yeah, like a thousand cc. Like, dude, I'm telling <laughs> you, man, you can get those for cheap. With shipping, Sam got two of those little K cars for like three grand from Japan. I'm gonna get them. Yeah. Is it getting worse, Peter? Well, at 75 on the cruise control, it does that weird little flare moo at like once a minute. But at 80, it does it about twice a minute. We'll check at 85. So yeah, let's try 85. Although I don't know if this guy behind me may be a trooper. Oh, yeah, don't, let's, not get, let's not get pulled over though. It's a Ford Explorer. Um, I don't think that is, no, that, that's just got a normal plate on it. You're good. Yeah, let's get it. Yeah. Oh. I mean, it's generally been happening a lot lately. That's 85. All right. We're at 
2200 RPM at 85 miles an hour. So that's to be a very numerically low final drive here. 2200 RPM at 85. But then again, it is the six speed. I keep on forgetting. Originally, I wanted the 4L80 van, which is the older one. And that's what I thought I was gonna get for, for this price. I mean, actually, I thought I was gonna pay like eight or nine for that. But then when this popped up, I, I thought it was a scam. Oh, and shout out to a subscriber. I posted up on Instagram and on Facebook at Legit Streetcars that I needed someone to just go out and physically make sure that this van existed in Jamestown, North Dakota. And I got a bunch of emails from you guys out there from people willing to go out. Some people were willing to drive a couple hours for me to check this out. So seriously appreciate that. Um, but I had someone that lived pretty close, about a half hour out just come look at it look at the title meet the guy I just make sure it was physically there because I, I didn't I had to send the guy four thousand dollars I just wired it to him and I'm like this is scam like money this is like right in that territory of it's way too good to be true but it was not I just got a smoking deal I think I could sell this van especially in Chicago for twelve thousand dollars three times what I paid so I still haven't 100% ruled out the torque converter because it will engage in multiple gears on this thing so let's turn this off. Does it show a little display thing that I just did something? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Okay, so we're putting it in tow mode, which I believe turns off torque converter lockup uh, and overdrive gears, I think. I don't know, unless it can sense that we're not towing anything, because it didn't do anything there, did it? We're still at the same RPM. Yeah. Like when I click it on Although, and off, well, it doesn't really change at all. Well, I'm at a lower speed now, so yeah, it might be. Oh, yeah, no, no, it did just change oh, there. Here, step, here, keep it on cruise right now. And let's see. You're on cruise? Yep. All right. I just... 1,500. Okay, now I'll hit it again. 1,400. Hit it again. 1,500. 1500. Okay. I mean, it does... I don't know. I don't know if it's doing anything. Okay. Never mind. According to Google, this can tow 7,400 to 9,700 pounds. I'm assuming that is based on which one you bought. This is the 3,500, though. So the 6-liter V8 has a fast idle option that makes it easier to run accessories while the vehicle is idling. Okay, cool. Standard 373 gear, optional locking rear limited slip differential. We'll have to do burnouts and figure that out. Properly equipped, the Express can tow up to 10,000 pounds. The heavy duty G3500, which is what this is, has an even longer wheelbase, gross vehicle rating up to 14,200 pounds. So yeah, this could tow, you know, right around 10,000 pounds. Look at that. 280 horsepower, 320 pound feet of torque, and a four or six speed automatic transmission, 31 gallon fuel tank. So I'm pretty sure this has the six speed trans. You can manually shift on the column, but we're not gonna play with that just yet. Maybe when we stop, we'll see how many gears this thing has. So we've set up a timer here. And we did 65 miles an hour there for how, how long? Like four and, a half minutes. four and a half minutes with no noise. And then it finally happened. So that seems like the uh, the speed we need to go if we want to reduce the slippage or that stuff is working, who knows? Uh, well, we're hitting some traffic. All right, so we were driving down the highway and we found a bunch of interesting old cars and we went and knocked on the door of the guy who owns this farmland and he, uh, he didn't shoot us, he was nice enough so let us kind of walk around. So these are a bunch of abandoned old cars. Look at this. I mean, they are all over the place. I mean, like this thing, I, I would love to come out here and see if I could just get it to run. Uh, we got an old Lincoln Continental as well. And he was telling us some of these have come from estate sales and he's lived here his entire life. And mother nature is just kind of taking over. So a lot of these are just gonna be part out vehicles. Uh, a lot of the floors are gone, so they look, you know, okay right here, but I mean, they're just rotted out really bad. Look at the interior. So obviously these would all need a frame off, but some of them just probably aren't worth it at this point. Yeah. Look at that, just mold growing everywhere. Look, they even have a Chevy Express van. He said that thing is uh, not running too well. And they basically just use it as storage. That's a cargo version. All right, guys, I'm hearing this noise a lot, you know, right in this area. Now, before it was in the back, I mean, it should be in this area if it's the trans. Um, we're going to see what we can see under here. All right, so for all you guys who've never worked on one of these vans before, this is a doghouse. And this is how you service a lot of the engine on one of these because it's kind of buried under the hood there. Looks like we gotta take some of these 10 millimeter bolts out. So we removed our little glove compartment area. See if that helps. This thing's not wanting to budge right now. All right, we got all that out. Let's 
So this will come out now, and yeah, there we go. Just a couple more straps right here. That should do it. Okay. There we go. All right. Ooh, it's warm. Sweet, yeah, yeah, it is warm because we have our LS engine right here by our feet. I gotta say, they insulate this very well. Like, this is cold to the touch. There is no heat transfer at all. We literally had the exhaust man full the engine right here. All right, this thing is an absolute beast <laughs> to get out. This is as far back as the seats go, and then it hits the dash, but I think we figured it out. We're just going straight back here with the doghouse. Ideally, I wanna, I wanna get this just in the back. We gotta, we gotta drive with the engine like this for a little while. I wanna see what we can hear. But wow, does this make it easy to work on. This is so nice. I can replace all the coils. I can see them. All yes, the coils, we yeah. can like do a tune-up right now. Oh, all you truck guys out there, look at the oil sending unit. They have to take the intake off, or you don't have to, but it's a complete pain in the butt if you don't. Look at how easy it is on this. Beautiful. All right, so we got the doghouse all the way out. And look at the insulation in here. That's why we don't hear anything or feel anything. It's crazy, like this is so hot, this is freezing cold. All right, Peter, you ready to go? Yeah, let's go. All right, go ahead and start her up. Got the cabin heater all yep. exposed. <laughs> <laughs> this is too cool. We're basically riding a motor. <laughs> this is way too cool. Man, and this engine is in excellent condition. I mean, look at this. Absolutely no leaks anywhere. It's just dusty and it is whisper quiet. I do not believe this has active fuel management. They definitely had it during these years, but I don't think they put it on the big vans. I could be wrong, but no, no, no. I don't think they had it because look at the plate here, the valley plate. I think that's the regular one. I don't know. I deleted it off my Caprice, which is the same year, six liter engine, so I should know, but I don't think they put it on everything. And we'll see if we got good motor mounts here. This is so weird. Peter's foot, the accelerator. The engine. Tell me this wouldn't be cool with a supercharger right here. How nice would that sound? We get some long tube headers, a blower. And a Lexan plate in the doghouse. Yes, we'll get a clear doghouse. We gotta get a yes. clear doghouse. Oh man, that'd be so cool. And you know what, with the AC in and everything, I don't Oh, oh, oh. there it is. There's the noise. You see the engine when it does that? Oh man. Yeah. Oh, that was the big one in, in third gear or whatever, right? Next one should be coming up right now. All right, here we go. Oh, that is brutal. Yeah, at first I kind of thought it was coming from the back somewhere, but yeah, we can definitely hear it right here at the transmission. How fast are we going now? 60. About 60 miles an hour. And we're definitely getting some heat in here now. But the exhaust is sealed. Like I'm not smelling any exhaust in the truck whatsoever. It's literally just the heat from all the air blowing through the radiator and the engine and everything coming on in. AC is fighting it though. Woo! All right. <laughs> all right, this is so crazy. When we roll the windows down, Sucks air it sucks here. all the air and it it's like turns into a literal oven inside of the van. It, like insta that, right? it instantly gets to like 150 degrees in here. But right now with the windows up, it's fine. Yeah. It's totally fine. Well, I'm just gonna kind of stretch out here. Rest my feet on the engine. It's beautiful. It's a lap of luxury, people. Especially if it was winter time, you'd have legitimate feet warmers. This transmission is screaming. Very, very comfy though. That was just kind of like, there we go. Foot massage, right? Foot massage for sure. But it's running too smooth. Good engine I'm, mounts. I'm going to unplug an injector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take, <laughs> take out a coil so I get a little shake. <laughs> Ooh, I think we have like 400 miles left to go and that's getting loud. I mean, we don't have that gigantic doghouse on, but... It's not getting any better. All right, so we shifted down into manual mode. So we can shift it with the little buttons here. And I'm trying to figure out a way to get the torque converter to not lock up without disconnecting anything. And it might not lock up in manual mode. That, that would have done it right there. Now we're in five. 
So it is the six speed, by the way. And we have not gotten it to do it in manual mode yet, have we? Yeah, no. Nothing. Okay, so now we're coming to a stop. All right, here we go. It's in manual one. Manual two. And you're, are you actually tapping it? Yeah. Oh, you are, okay. That's basically That's where it would happen before, yeah. going into fourth gear. Now we're in fifth gear. And now sixth. Man, we haven't gotten anything. Wow, nobody's done it. Nothing at all in manual mode, which very well could mean that the torque converter is not locking up. Oh, there it is, there it is. So we're in manual sixth gear. But, yeah, I don't know, maybe it locks up once you get into sixth in manual mode because that's it, there's nowhere else for it to go. But I believe this transmission locks up in all the other gears as well. At least partially locks up. And now we're, we're still at sixth gear and it's doing it. Ah, I don't know. This could still be a torque converter issue. Because they're pulse width modulated. So in sixth gear, it could just be kicking on and off. Which I would think the tow button would turn that off. But it's not doing anything. All right, guys. We just pulled into a Casey's gas station. And I know I shouldn't be messing with this you know, 400 miles or so away from home, but I just can't help myself. I really want to disable the torque converter clutch and see that right there, that's the coolant temperature sensor and it won't lock up the converter if it doesn't know the engine's coolant temperature. So I'm, I'm gonna disconnect it. Uh, this is hot. Oh my, no. There we go. Okay. All right, see, we got the connector disconnected and we should know right away. Go ahead and fire it up. Let's see how, let's see how it runs. We're gonna set a check engine light, I know. All right, let's go for a quick spin. Engine hot, AC off, so it's it's freaking out, and it's reading nothing there. And the temperature gauge, I would venture to say, yeah, that's not working at all. The blower motor is, but it's not cooling. I'd venture to say the torque converter will not be allowed to lock up now. And we should know pretty soon here, especially right when it gets into fourth gear. And we won't have it in manual mode this time. We'll just leave it in regular. Feels definitely different right now. Feels different? Is it in limp mode? Oh no, that's first gear. All right, here we go. That's second. That's third. Now it should happen really soon. Okay. All right, the experiment failed. <laughs> Still doing it. Put it in manual mode again. And let's get it back in, uh, Let's get it back in that gear, and we'll go the same speed and see what happens. All right, we're in manual mode right now. Coolant sensor disconnected. Uh, what's that, third? All right, it would happen right about now. Yeah, it, it straight up does not happen in manual mode until we get into sixth gear. I mean, like, at all. Oh, oh okay. That was manual nice. mode? Yeah, that was manual mode. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Oh, jeez. Never mind. It feels like it's getting worse. Okay, yeah. We, Every time we, it does we it. Got, we gotta get back to the shop. And it's hot as ball in yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're putting the thing back in <laughs> and just driving. All right, guys. It's starting to get dark. And, of course, it's raining like crazy. Visibility is already horrible. And, Do we know uh, if the headlights work? We did not check the headlight functionality. I know the brake lights work. I don't know why we didn't check the headlights. That would have been smart. We um, still yeah. have uh, 475 four, miles. ETA 1:34 a.m. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be driving in the dark now. Um, okay. Yikes. Oh yep. 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 She is still there. Yeah, the trans is not fixed. That uh, whatever super loop trans fix stuff, it doesn't work so far. All right, it's getting worse. I'm only doing like 55 right now. Everybody's going super slow. Yeah, we're slowing down. I mean, like, no visibility. No visibility at all. Oh, man. This is getting dangerous. I know people are always like, oh, my God, it's just raining. Everybody's slowing down. Sometimes that's legitimate. Like, right now. Like, yeah. That car's like, what, 
40 feet ahead of us? Yeah, no, we can't see anything, man. I mean, people have their flashers on, like, this is straight up dangerous. How are these wiper blades? They're not the best. How's the windshield? It's not the best either, and it's cracked. Uh, yeah. Just send it. No, dude, I love this van. I don't, I don't want to risk my van. It's like the most common vehicle in the world, but I like my... Oh, it is loud. Oh, my God. I become one of those guys with glasses on. I don't know why, but I know that you're not supposed to drive with flashers on. Yeah, I don't know why either. I, never, I, I mean, we have our headlights on, the, light, the tail lights are on. Uh, I mean, I get it, I guess. It's like more visible with the flashers, but... Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get behind the flasher guy. The guy in front of him doesn't even have to do something. Yeah. Behind. There's a guy in front of him with no lights on at all. That's dangerous. Like, dude, that guy's got his lights on. I can barely see it. I can't see anything, man. Yeah, that's like 50 feet of visibility. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a car up there somewhere car with no lights on. No lights on, yeah. That car is no oh, lights. It's yeah. a truck, right? Right there. That is very close. 466 miles to go. Into the darkness. 50 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, 55. All right, we got 65 now. I'm doing at 65. You should have brought some uh, some Avalon King. I was gonna say like the ceramic coating right now would help big time. Yeah. Especially on the side glass. Yeah. It's like I can't see anything from my mirrors or anything. Ceramic coating your glass really does help for that. But it's it's clearing up and it's actually I don't know it's it's kind of beautiful out here at yeah. dusk. It is nice. All right, now I'm leaning back. Uh, the Chicago stance. That's right, we're ready. So we pulled over to take some pictures by like a barn. What's that noise? Uh oh. Uh -oh. So service to Villa Track. Yes. Uh oh. ABS. No, I need Stabila Track, people. I need my Stabila Track. Oh, that's right. not good. Who's got Who's got ABS on their bingo card? Don't get me wrong, like I will definitely take this as a problem right now. Like, I'm okay with, with this. Like, as long as it doesn't stop driving or have anything to do with anything important. Well, that, that looks like it has to do with the brakes. Well, so yeah, yeah. It won't stop moving. No, 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 we'll be like, all right. Like, that's the problem, it won't stop driving. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I've owned plenty of cars that didn't have any form of traction control or anything. Okay, anyway, uh, <laughs> what I was saying before this thing broke again, we were taking a picture by a barn. I wanted to get a cool barn picture with this van. I thought it was an abandoned barn, it wasn't. So we were just having some pictures. A couple of good old boys start walking towards us. We just left. Pulled over to plug in the coolant sensor and one of them pulls up in their pickup truck. And I'm like, Peter, we're like, this is how you get shot. This is how Chicago city folk get shot. And he's like, why are you by my barn? Just like that. But it was much nicer. And I'm like, ah, I just told the truth. But I'm like, we're from Illinois. <laughs> Just, we wanted to take some cool pictures driving through, and I told them we bought the van, and I'm like, I don't say I'm from Chicago. I don't think any country folk want to hear that. Country folk, let me know in the comment section. A couple Chicago guys rolling through. Probably, somewhere in Minnesota. Somewhere in, oh yeah, we're in Minnesota at this point, in the farm. But you probably don't want to take kindly to us. To us. I, I wouldn't. We don't take kindly to no city folk. Yeehaw! We left with no lights on. It's only been like 300 and something miles. How did we do this? The check engine lights are fault. But uh, yeah, this is looking like a Euro car at this point. Good oil pressure though. Good coolant temp. Good battery voltage. I'll take it. <laughs> That's a good deal. That is a good deal. Look at this. It's only 389 for regular. That's like a full dollar and like 20 cents cheaper than Chicago. Yeah, Unbelievable. I don't remember the last time it was that cheap. Uh, but yeah, this thing has a, like a 30 gallon tank. We were around a quarter tank, so 24 more gallons. Not bad. And just look at how sweet this thing is. I love it. I'm in love. I'm in love. All of its bumps and bruises, they all tell a story. I mean, the story is, is mostly just like GM paint failure, but you know, everything else, the dents on the door, there was, someone got in trouble for that. And we're gonna make a ton more memories. This thing's gonna be doing gigantic rolling burnouts. It's gonna have wider 
wheels with the same hubcaps and everything. I'm so excited. We even might do some kind of church decor on this, but car related. Um, maybe some legit streetcar stuff. We're gonna tint the windows. It is gonna be one bad mama jamma. Well, we're down a couple of lights. ABS, traction, service stability, all that stuff is all gone. Sweet, it's fixing itself. The gift that keeps on giving. That's right. It's 1.42 in the morning. We are three minutes away from the shop. And we made it. The van is here, about 800 miles away from home. I still have like another half hour to get, actually get to my house. So yeah, it's two o'clock in the morning. You're sleeping here, aren't you? I am sleeping here. Yeah, we got, we got a lot of work to do in the morning. So Peter's a trooper. He's gonna sleep on the pullout couch. For the first time, no one's ever slept on that thing. All right. So I'm glad I bought it. All right, guys, so we've driven this van about 150 more miles since getting it back here to the shop. We took the doghouse out again, so here's a little cold start for you. Sounds good. But you're not going to believe what has happened since arriving in Chicago. Oh, it's slipping everywhere. Oh, we can't go anywhere. I am floored all the way. Oh, there we go. <laughs> This thing is just totally slipping now. That's it. That's it. Well, I watch this from a dead stop. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> That's all she wrote, folks. Look at this. I'm in reverse right now. And it's just revving up like we're in neutral. Oh man, I got it in first and it won't even move. Oh, there we go, a little, little bit. Come on, baby, give me reverse. Give me some reverse. No, we got nothing. All right, we gotta push it into the shop. Well, the important part is, is that the van is at legit three quarters. We did make it, but this thing went like 202,000 miles and then the transmission decided to fail within about 150 miles of us making it back. That's such a small, it's like 0.001%. <laughs> it, see, this is why it's meant to be. This is why I already love this van. It's already taking care of us. Yeah, this just happened a few hundred miles ago. We'd have been stranded in the middle of nowhere with really no tools in a gigantic van to have to get towed. It would have cost me a ton of money. So I'm saving money here with this van already. Yeah. So it's She's good, telling us what she needs. That's right. It's a, it was a good financial decision. But anyway, with that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this adventure. I don't recommend really any of you guys do this kind of stuff. It's just, it is a ton of fun. It, it was I got to <laughs> say, I mean, we're going to do it again. We are never going to learn our lesson. That is for sure. <laughs> so if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already, and most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll see all of you in the next video.